In this lesson, we're going to talk about some properties of multiplication. So the first property is the closure property. And the closure property just says that when you take the product of any two whole numbers, you're going to get a unique whole number. And this really stems from the fact that the whole numbers are closed under addition. And when you think about multiplication as repeated addition, then all we're doing when we look at A times B is we're adding up the number B A times. Well, when I add two whole numbers, I get another whole number. So we also have the closure property for multiplication. We have the commutative property, which means we can multiply in any order. A times B is the same as B times A. One model that would um, can be used to help us show that the commutative property is true is the area model. On the left, I have a 3 by 4 rectangle, but on the right, it's a 4 by 3 rectangle. But when you count up the squares, they're the same area. And really, it's the same rectangle. I just rotated it on its side. So we have the commutative property for multiplication. We also have the associative property, which means when there's parentheses involving multiplication, it's not important which ones you multiply first. So a times b and then times c is the same thing as a times the product of b and c. And in this picture, it's a volume because I have three numbers multiplied together. So we have um, length, width, and depth. And so if I look at a 3 by 5 by 4 box, then I could cut it up um, slicing it from the front to the back and I'd have one slice that's a 3 by 5, I'd have a second slice that's a 3 by 5, a third slice that's a 3 by 5, and a fourth slice that is a 3 by 5. So this represents 3 by 5 times 4 because I have four slices. So that's represented by 3 times 5 parentheses times 4. Or we could slice horizontally, and so we get these three slices. And these slices are 5 by 4s. And so I'd have one slice of size 5 by 4, two slices of size 5 by 4, three slices of size 5 by 4. So this is three times 5 by 4. You may also notice that we could have sliced in a different way, um, but these two pictures um, help us to see that the associative property holds. A fourth property for multiplication is the identity problem. The multiplicative identity is the number 1, meaning 1 times any whole number just gives us that whole number back. And so 1 times a equals a. We also know a times 1 equals a. Because we have the commutative property, we can multiply in any order. So here's an area model. If I have a 1 by 4 rectangle, we can see that the number of squares inside is 4. Um, I also put up the Cartesian product model. Let's say that we've already chosen that the first name for our baby boy is going to be Michael, but our middle names are either Thomas, Alexander, or Benjamin. When I look at the cross product of the first name with the last names, we get Michael Thomas, Michael Alexander, or Michael Benjamin. We only have the three choices. And so this is showing 1 times 3 equals 3. Another really important multiplication property is the zero multiplication property, which says that when you multiply by zero, you get zero. And I used the repeated addition model to show that 3 times zero is equal to zero. By repeated addition, 3 times zero means I have three groups of zero. So I'd have zero plus zero plus zero. But we know that when we add zero to a number by the zero addition property that we get, um, we don't change the sum. And so we get zero plus zero plus zero is 
zero. This property combines both multiplication and addition. It's the distributive property of multiplication over addition, and we could also expand it to the distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. So on the left, we have a times the quantity b plus c equals a times b plus a times c. And then on the right side, I have the subtraction written. a times the quantity b minus c is a times b minus a times c. So why is this property true? Let's model it with repeated addition. If I look at 3 times the quantity 2 plus 5, repeated addition says that this is 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5. It's three groups of 2 plus 5. But we have the associative and commutative property of addition. And so I can reorder these terms and I'd have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So I get three groups of 2 and three groups of 5. And so this is showing the distributive property of multiplication over addition. 3 times 2, 3 times the quantity 2 plus 5 is the same as 3 times 2 plus 3 times 5. Another really great model to show the distributive property is the area model. If I'm looking at 3 times 2 plus 5, I can think about it as a rectangle where the um, left side is size 3 and the bottom side is 2 plus 5, which equals 7, but I broke it up into a blue rectangle that's 3 by 2 and a red rectangle that's 3 by 5. So the total area could be found either by first gluing them together and noticing it's a 3 by 7, or looking at the area of the blue rectangle, which is 3 times 2, and then add that to the area of the red rectangle, that's 3 times 5. I also wanted to show the subtraction the distributive property of multiplication over subtraction, the same picture can be used to show 3 times the quantity 7 minus 2 is 3 times 7 minus 3 times 2. So 7 minus 2 is going to be just this 5. I had a full 7 and I cut off 2, that leaves me with 5. And so the red rectangle is my 3 times 7 minus 2. But we could take the entire rectangle, which is a 3 by 7, and then subtract the blue rectangle off of it, which is a 3 by 2. And we end up with the same area. And so it is important to think about modeling these properties to help our students see why they're true. So kind of a nod forward to algebra, um, one thing that we've, we might do in the future is look at the product of 3 plus 4 times 2 plus 5. Well, we'd have to use the distributive property twice. So I'm going to use the distributive property and look at it as 3 plus 4 times 2. So I'm taking this whole thing as a factor and multiplying it by 2 and then multiplying it by 5. So I get 3 plus 4 times 2 plus 3 plus 4 times 5. But now we get to use the distributive property here. And we get 3 times 2 plus 4 times 2. And here we get 3 times 5 plus 4 times 5. And I really like the area model. I have one side that's 3 plus 4 and another side that's 2 plus 5. But notice it's cut up into smaller rectangles. This upper left rectangle is a 3 by 2. The lower left rectangle is a 4 by 2. Then we have a 3 by 5 and a 4 by 5. So the total area of our rectangle 
could be cut up into these smaller rectangles as well.